vos émissions préférées, elles sont toutes sur Radio Grand Lac. Your English Weekly. Your English Weekly. La chronique 100% en anglais de Radio Grand Lac avec Shined. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Your English Weekly. Um... Bonjour chers auditeurs et bienvenue à Your English Weekly sur le 92.1 FM, l'émission qui vous présente le meilleur de la langue anglaise avec la culture divertissement. Je suis votre animatrice Sinead et je suis ravie d'y être ici aujourd'hui avec Tim. Vous pouvez nous retrouver à Your English Workshop à Aix-les-Bains ou le Ravoir et à bientôt à Technolac. N'oubliez pas de regarder notre site pour les dernières informations et pour l'ouverture à Technolac, justement. L'épisode aujourd'hui est de le niveau A de B1 avec un contenu assez intéressant là aujourd'hui qui vont vous améliorer vos capacités d'écoute et qui vont vous divertissez également. Tout au long de cette émission, n'hésitez pas de nous écouter sur le 92.1 sur le Radio Grand Lac et puis euh, vous pouvez trouver sur YouTube. Good afternoon, lovely listeners, and welcome to Your English Weekly, the show that brings you the best of the English language between culture and, of course, entertainment. I'm your host, Sinead, and I'm grateful to be here today with Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Sinead. And today's episode is about the Sagrada Familia with me, which will be an A2 level. And Tim, your episode is about... It's about the breakthrough of... AI, artificial intelligence, how how scientists at the university have uh, enabled AI to help them fight against MRSA. Okay, good. Well, you'll tell us more about that in a few minutes. Don't forget, listeners, the Axe is a course on the listening. And of course, we will be here to... To, to help you improve that with new vocabulary. So don't miss out on the fun. Tune in, take notes, and of course you can find our script on your English workshop. So make your learning progress efficient. Okay, so stay with us here on 92.1. Tim, mm -hmm. how are you today? I'm very well, thank you, Sinead. A nice long weekend. Yeah, exactly. Another long weekend. Mm -hmm. So Tim, tell us what pun do we have for our listeners today okay i have a split personality said tom being frank i have a split personality said tom being frank okay go on tim explain to us <laughs> it basically means tom and frank are two names yeah and being frank is someone that's sincere That's being sincere yeah. and clear and straight to the point. So Tom was being frank when he said he has a split personality. Tom was being straightforward mm -hmm. and frank when he was telling Frank about his split personality. Ooh, nice. Thank you. So auditors, try and remember the pun. So, uh, Tim, do you yes. want to tell us a little bit today about uh, some of the words sure. we're going to hear with the AI and the new medical breakthrough? Okay. Um, uh, on the rise. Which is en awesome. To lead to. Conduire à. A superbug. Une super bacteria. A compound. Un composé. Mm. To kill off. Éliminé. Mimic. Alors, imiter. Neural. Alors, c'est neuronal. To come up with. Trouver, inventer. And to screen. Alors, to screen has a few meanings. One meaning, of course, being an écran. And the second meaning to screen, c'est en fait, sélectionner des gens. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, they're, they're the words you'll hear. Okay. So, Tim, do you yeah, want to, sure. to read it to us? Okay, I was reading this article from Now English, and um, it's a, in Massachusetts, Massachusetts, in uh, the Institute of Technology, in Boston, I believe. It's scientists there have been using artificial intelligence to create new antibiotics in over 60 years. 
and I don't know if you've heard of it, MRSA before, but the antibiotic resistant infections yeah. um, have been on the rise over yeah. many years. And the, there's around 150,000 annual cases. And in the EU, it led to almost 35,000 deaths. Okay, so 35 people have lost their lives. <laughs> Well, 35,000. 35,000, yeah. sorry, because they are re resistant. resistant to antibiotics. Yes. So these superbugs have been resistant to all known treatments. So at MIT, they used AI to study close to 39,000 compounds for their ability to kill off MRSA infections. And they did this by using very large numbers of calculations that mimic the neural connections of the human mind, but at much higher levels. They came up with two new compounds that reduce both systematic, systemic and skin infections by a factor of 10, mm -hmm. which is a lot. It is indeed. Yes, so that is a breakthrough. That's a big breakthrough. And they've screened over 12 million available compounds, so with the help of AI, obviously, because that would take a lot longer with humans were doing that. And looking at their ability to fight MRSA has led them to test 280 of them in a laboratory setting where they narrowed down the selection to two promising candidates oh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's a game changer. They've, they've, they've used this on mice before okay, and it works. So, so there's no reason it shouldn't, it shouldn't work in the well, future? Hope, on humans, yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, we will be seeing more and more of different breakthroughs just listeners a breakthrough what does that mean Tim a breakthrough it's a new um, revelation like yeah. a so something that has been invented or has been gone farther after years of research a breakthrough and you've got a breakthrough for us well, my breakthrough, <laughs> well, it's not an invention, but it's an uh, continuing uh, story, right. a saga, and maybe that's why it's called the Sagrada Familia, mm -hmm. which is a monument. Do you know where this monument is, Tim? In Barcelona. In Barcelona, exactly. And did you know that it's one of the most extraordinary uh, churches, and it will be the, the biggest church with the highest spire when it is created or when it's finished. Wow. But before we do that, listeners, here are some of the words you're going to hear today. So you're going to hear the word infusing. And in my text today, infusing means mele, uh, de mele quelque chose. And then we have the word dedicated, which means consacré. A spire. What is a spire? Do you know what a spire is, in the Tim? Moon. Do you find them on churches normally? You do. On you the find them the on church. churches. They are la flesh. And then you're going to have uh, a layout, which is a plan. An aisle. Do you know what an aisle is? Now you walk down the aisle, don't you? You do indeed. When you get married. When you get married or in a plane, you walk down the couloir, mm -hmm. the aisles. Renowned, we know that word, it's celeb. We have ornate, which is orné. Of course, we have the word, um, what else do we have? We have depicts, which represents, le représenté. Suffering, la souffrance. Completed, in this case, of course, finished. Completed, achieve. You will hear the word sorrow which means douleur. And then, of course, you're going to hear a word like branch out, which means se, ha, se, alors, to branch out means to ramifier, uh, to, ramifier uh, to, to move. Huh? Stained glass windows, les vitraux. Um, legacy, le héritage, thanks to Grâce à, and there we go. Okay, so here we are to read. We're going to talk about the early development and the construction of the Sagrada Familia. It started in March 19th, 1882, with an architect, Francisco de 
Paula del Villar, who initially planned a traditional Gothic church. But with slow progress, he resigned, and then, of course, the famous Antony, Antony Gaudi became the chief architect, making a change in the project's history. He totally transformed the design by infusing, don't melee, adding a unique style that included natural forms, complex geometries, and of course, innovative engineering. So his vision was, he dedicated more than 40 years of his life to this project, and the last 15 years were exclusively with the, um, the Sagrada Familia. Uh, during this, he included 18 spires, each symbolizing a different biblical figure, donc un personnage de la Bible. The tallest spire was dedicated to Jesus. The basilicas, the basilicas layout is a Latin cross with five aisles, richly symbolic and naturalistic elements, with naturalistic elements. So, okay, there is that. Then they have the facades, uh, same word in French, the facades. So it's renowned for three famous facades, the nativity, the passion, and the glory, each representing a different aspect of the life of Jesus or Christ, if you want. The nativity facade was finished in 1935, and that celebrates the birth. Um, it's highly ornate, featuring sculptures of animals, plants, scenes from the Bible, of course, that give a sense of joy and festive uh, festivity. Uh, this fa facade faces the rising sun, which of course symbolizes birth and life. Then we have the passion facade, which is a little bit more austere. It depicts suffering, the suffering of Christ, its construction began in 1954, completed in 1976. There were a lot of skeletal figures by a sculpture called Joseph Maria, which show a lot of sorrow uh, and the sorrow of Christ. This facade, of course, faces the setting of the sun, symbolizing death, of course. Inside, we have the, or sorry, outside, there's still the glory facade. And this facade is still under construction. And it will be the largest part of the building with the path of to God, the resurrection, eternal life. It will include scenes of dark, which will be more sombre, and of course, heavenly virtues, the celeste um, vertu. The interior is more, which was finished in 2010, so not too, too long ago. It's designed to look like a big forest with lots of columns branching out, the qui se I don't know the word in French, sorry, like trees creating a unique atmosphere with light to filter through stained glass windows, which is the vitro, um, filling space with a spectrum of colors, but also with other vitro at the top with no colors, which give a light to filter through, um, to give, um, to give a aesthetic appeal, but also it provides a really good structure at the same time for the building, uh, with the the um, the use of the ox uh, by Gordy. So he was inspired by nature, Gordy, and during this we can uh, because of this we can see all the aspects of the basilica and his uses of light color and forms creating an immersive spiritual experience that connects the visitors to the beauty of 
the natural world, of course, with the divine. So, now what will happen after? Well, the construction and the legacy after Gordy's death in 1926, the construction continued with different architects. Gordy's original plans and model changed because of economic situations. And the construction continued thanks to private donations and, of course, ticket sales from visitors. Today, the Sagrada Familia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and probably the most visited monument in Spain. And they are hoping to complete it. Do you know why, when and why? Not when. Okay, by 2026, because it coincides with Gordy's death. Mm-hmm. So... Once it's complete, it should be and will be the tallest church building with its central spire reaching 172.5 meters. So it's a symbol of Barcelona, but also a symbol of Gordy's genius work, blending faith with people, with the church, nature, architectural innovation, into a work of art. So there you go. And you went there. I did indeed. Well, listeners, we have so much more to say on that, but unfortunately it won't be possible again today. So we hope that you learned more with myself and Tim and expanded your vocabulary. As I said earlier, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube and you can join us every week from a quarter past 12 to half past 12. Don't forget to stay tuned on Radio Grand Lac for one hour, one commune with Jean-Pierre and the Mutt Cerbalex. And tonight at half past seven, La 16 Neuvième with Kevin, Guillaume and Vincent. Toute l'émission est sur le cinéma. Well, listeners, I hope you will come back next week and join us here on 92.1 FM in your English weekly. weekly. So that's all from myself and Tim. Bye, Tim. Bye-bye, Janine. Bye to you from us at you. Your English Weekly. Your English Weekly. La chronique 100% en anglais de Radio Grand Lac avec Sinéad. Radio Grand Lac, votre radio.